And this is, the, this is just where I'll talk about the danger signs, like things to look for and how to protect your skin. I think this would be a good one because I'm my background is oncology nursing. So I do have some good tips. Okay, seasonal allergies. Um, so anyone can respond, but what do we know? What do you know about seasonal allergies? Dave, did you wanna unmute yourself? Dave. Dave, can you unmute yourself please? Yeah, okay. well, I've had seasonal allergies for years. Uh, basically, as it says, uh, summer, spring, fall, winter. Uh, they seem to, to my case, they seem to be year round, basically. Uh, I guess there's different allergy uh, causes, but I still have the same results runny nose, itchy eyes. Yes, the symptoms. So, and thanks for sharing this. So, anyone else want to say anything about allergies, suffering from it, or? All right, so allergies, um, it's the reason why it's called seasonal is because it is seasonal. And as Dave was saying, um, he thinks that he has them all year round and that's a lot of people. Um, and this is because New, New York as a whole is one of the places with higher pollen because of the trees and the types of trees that we have in New York as well. So um, there are particular allergy capitals, they call them. I do have a few on one of my slides. So we have, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter. Um, winter, usually you have less allergies and it's usually mold, which my focus here is the pollen allergies. And we know that you get a lot of symptoms, which might be similar to a cold or a flu. And people know that you take medications, usually for allergies. So, um, when is allergy season? So generally, there are major se seasons for allergies, which would be March and April would be tree pollen. May and June is grass pollen. July and August is wheat pollen. And August until the first beginning of like snow would be like the ragweed pollen. So um, I have another question. How do you know other than getting the symptoms, how do you know that you have allergies? Does anyone want to answer that? Like how, how would you know that you have allergies if you, I mean, you may be getting symptoms and I, I can tell a story about it if no one wants to share. <laughs> Kevin, if you have anything to say. <laughs> okay, so one story about this is, I'm a classic case of that. So when I first came to this country, I, was having like a runny nose. And I think I ended up having actually a red eye one day. And I was like, do I have conjunctivitis? And, you know, I went to the school nurse because I'd started college. I came and I went straight to college and I started college. And then the nurse just gave me, you know, stuff to put in my eyes. I put it in my eyes, it went away and all that stuff. But every year I would notice, um, you know, I'm getting like this stuffy nose and where I'm from, which is Guyana, people have a saying, like they'll always say, oh, you have a cold. Once they hear your nose is congested, they'll think you have a cold, which in Guyana, the only thing we, we're used to dealing with would be like colds. People never talk about allergies. So, um, so all my relatives would be like, oh, you have a cold. The way I knew that was not a cold is because it was not going away. <laughs> <laughs> no cold lasts forever. So I'm like, what is wrong? And then the way I knew I had allergies, I actually went to the doctor and I tested. I did an allergy test where they put like different allergens on your skin and they use both hands. So they'll use my, they use my right arm and my left arm and they put different things in different places. And I sat there for, I think an hour or whatever. And after that time, then they, checked it and then found out that I'm allergic to cats, poll tree pollen and um, and weed. So, um, you know, I, I always have to be very careful when I'm going out or in the summer. Now I know exactly what I'm allergic to. I had no other allergies. So that's another way you can find out if you have allergies. 
So with allergies, we also know that there are symptoms. So like they've said, the sneezing, you're sneezing, sneezing, it's usually never one sneeze, it usually comes in threes. <laughs> you're like tissue, tissue, tissue. And someone is there on the side saying, um, bless you, bless you, bless you, <laughs> which is always funny <laughs> to me. I found that funny when I first came to America as well. So anyway, um, you have the congestion in your nose. Um, you know, it's you stuffy, you're waking up in the morning, just stuffy. Um, one example of this, um, the other morning I woke up early and I did hear that someone was outside doing something with the grass, but I wasn't sure. But I was like, why am I having allergy symptoms in my apartment? When I got outside, I saw that the super was cutting the grass. So I was like, blamed him. I was like, because I had all my windows open and I didn't know, you know, if I had known, I would have closed it. So I was like, you're the cause of my allergies. <laughs> he was just like, he just laughed <laughs> because he knows me. So um, I'm like, you know, so that was funny. So um, then you have the itching. So you can have itching of, it's usually like, you know, your eyes can itch, your mouth can itch, sometimes the back of your throat, um, your nose can itch. Some people, even their ears will itch. Some people, even their skin may itch. So um, the itching happens, you have tearing, your eyes are running water. There's, you know, you can have red eyes. Um, then you have also have like runny nose as well. And there are other symptoms as well. There's, um, with allergies, you can also have sometimes GI symptoms, but these are the most common symptoms for seasonal allergies. So why are we having all these symptoms? This is because of our friend here, histamine. <laughs> so every time I see this, when I made this slide, what I thought of, I know the movie Encanto has, um, they said, nobody talks about Bruno. So I just, when I put this there, I said, let's talk about histamine. For some reason it came into my head saying, you know, let's talk about histamine, not Bruno. Okay, so I do have a video for that. I just hope it works well. Let's see how this is going to work. Can you guys hear it? Oh, we can't hear it. We can barely hear it and we can't see it. You have to change your, probably have to share your a different screen. Do you need help? You mean me come in and help? I'm going to try to do new, new share and do this. Can you hear now? Did you share, did you do the, the, you know, when you shared, did you do the thing for the uh, video? Uh, you know, the, the sound? No, I think I have to do that. Yes. And oh, then we'll I'm trying to stop it. Okay. Where do I go for that, Barbara? Remote control? Um, coming. Share clipboard. More. Share sound. I think that's it. Oh, oh you say or you're ready. Ready. Here now, Dave? From yeah, NIH right. Medline Plus Magazine. I'm going to make it a little louder. Histamine. Is it the most annoying chemical in the body? Plant. Histamine. Friend or foe? Or frenemy? From NIH Medline Plus Magazine. Histamine. Is it the most annoying chemical in the body? Plant. It's the stuff that allergies are made of. Hay fever, food allergy, skin allergies. Histamine plays a big role in all of them. And those conditions play a big role in us. In 2015, CDC data showed that more than 8% of U.S. adults had hay fever. More than 5% of U.S. children had food allergies, and at least 12% of all U.S. kids had skin allergies. So what's the deal? Why do we have such a pesky chemical in our body? Well, histamine is usually our friend. Histamine is a signaling molecule sending messages between cells. It tells stomach cells to make stomach acid, and it helps our brain stay awake. You may have seen these effects illustrated by medicines that block histamine. Some antihistamines can make us sleepy, and other antihistamines are used to treat acid reflux. 
Histamine also works with our immune system. It helps protect us from foreign invaders. When the immune system discovers an invader, immune cells called B cells make IgE antibodies. The IgEs are like wanted signs that spread throughout the body, telling other immune cells about specific invaders to look for. Eventually, mast cells and basophils pick up the IgEs and become sensitized. When they come in contact with a target invader, they spew histamine and other inflammatory chemicals. Blood vessels become leakier so that white blood cells and other protective substances can sneak through and fight the invader. Histamine's actions are great for protecting the body against parasites. But with allergies, the immune system overreacts to harmless substances, not parasites. This is when histamine becomes our foe. Common allergens include peanuts, pollen, and animal dander. Leaky vessels cause tearing in eyes, congestion in the nose, and swelling basically anywhere. Histamine works with nerves to produce itching. In food allergies, it can cause vomiting and diarrhea. And it constricts muscles in the lungs, making it harder to breathe. Most worrisome is when histamine contributes to anaphylaxis, a severe reaction that is potentially fatal. Swollen airways can prevent breathing, and a rapid drop in blood pressure could starve organs of vital blood. So what can be done about histamine? Antihistamines block cells from seeing histamine and can treat common allergies. Medicines like steroids can calm the inflammatory effects of allergies, and anaphylaxis needs to be treated with a shot of epinephrine, which opens up airways and increases blood pressure. So our relationship with histamine is complicated. We can do better. NIH, and specifically the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, support research of histamine and its related conditions. Great progress is being made in understanding allergy triggers and managing allergic symptoms, and figuring out why histamine, our frenemy, acts the way it does. Find out specific up-to-date research and stories from MedlinePlus.gov and NIH Medline Plus the magazine medlineplus.gov forward slash magazine and learn more about NIAID research at niaid.ni Okay, so back to the slide. Any questions? Okay, moving right along. So what is a pollen allergy? So most of the allergies we are experiencing, they're from pollen. So the pollen allergy is the most common trigger for seasonal allergies. And it's also known as hay fever or medically, we say like when we see someone would come coming into the clinic with a runny nose and it's not like anything viral or bacterial, we'll say it's seasonal allergic rhinitis. So you can have it in spring, summer, fall and winter. In some states in New York, we do have it in the winter. It's from plants. It's not usually from flowering plants like rose, plant or like the pear tree, um, because these are plants that utilize insects to pollinate. So it's usually from plants that's using like the wind for pollination. And you have it in trees, grass, and weed. And the pollen, of course, once it's in the air, it gets into your eyes, into your nose. Um, your nose is your lungs and creates, causes allergy symptoms. So um, I'm sure that everyone realized that during um, COVID, a lot of people had less allergies because why? They're wearing a mask. So I, for one, a lot of times now, you know, I mean, even when COVID is finished, I will still keep my mask on because if it's somewhere where, you know, I can tell there's pollen, I can always put on my mask. Um, one thing to remember though, 
um, the regular mask that we're wearing would not protect you from large, it would protect you from large pollen, but smaller pollen, it would not protect you from that. That can go through the mask. So you'd probably need like a N95 or something. So here we have um, some allergy capitals. The most challenging seeds, let's say, would be the ones in the top. I see buffalo is here. Um, you know, a lot of trees. Albany is here. The least challenging cities are the ones by the water with, you know, I guess not as many trees and plants to give us allergies. So I did think it was important for me to have at least a look at or, or to present something with COVID-19 and allergies. Um, one of the things that I would see a lot is um, after being tested positive with COVID, oftentimes people would say, oh, my nose is running, but you know, I thought it was an allergy. So for now, I, I would say to everyone, if your nose is runny, you should test because COVID comes with runny nose, allergy comes with runny nose, sometimes they're not, you know, so you'd want to test to be sure. So here I have the symptoms, COVID-19. You know, the new COVID-19, I know they were talking about it this morning, the BA5. Um, that one, from what I'm seeing, like in the clinic, people are either starting out with a cough, but e e more so they're left with a cough. And, you know, it's like, it's like the cough take after COVID, the other symptoms are gone, the coughing continues. So this is definitely an issue with COVID. Allergies, sometimes you have a cough, sometimes not. Sometimes with allergies, the cough is more of like a post-nasal kind of drip, you know, that's causing the cough. Fevers, with allergies, you're not gonna have a fever. So, <laughs> so that's important to remember. Um, COVID usually has a fever, but the new COVID strains are not presenting with fevers either. For allergies, you do not have muscle aches. If you have muscle aches, that's probably the flu, something else. Um, COVID-19, you can have muscle aches. Tiredness, you can have it with COVID-19. Allergies, sometimes you're tired because your body is, like it's preparing a defense for something. So um, I always say to people, the reason why our bodies get tired easily is because a lot of times, oftentimes we're dehydrated. So the cells, when they don't have enough water, you're going to feel tired because the cell can't do all the work it has to do. If you're dehydrated and you have allergies, you didn't sleep well, you know, you can be tired. Itchy nose, eyes and mouth, which I said before, that's usually not COVID-19, that's usually allergies. Sneezing, usually an allergy. Sore throat, not usually with an allergy, but you can have that with COVID and a lot of people are having sore throats now with COVID. Runny or stuffy nose can be for both. Pink eye can be for, I have not seen pink eye with COVID-19 actually, but um, that's what the research is showing. Sometimes it can happen. Um, for allergies, I did have a pink eye. I know that's possible. Nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, you wouldn't have that with an allergy. But COVID, we know that it comes with nausea, diarrhea, diarrhea and vomiting. New loss of taste or smell, usually that can happen, not with an allergy. Any questions? Okay, so how do we treat allergies? We have the antihistamines, <clears throat> which are doing the opposite thing, you know, the, of histamine. It reduces the symptoms by, it inhibits the release of the mast cells, which usually open up and let out histamine. So it reduces that. Um, you can have it in the nasal or a spray for the eye or the nose. There's also the corticosteroids, which are usually, it's well, this is nasal, intranasal. This is used for mild to severe. Um, and for higher doses, you require a prescription. Then you have the combination ones, which combines both antihistamine with the corticosteroids. Um, first, people with severe allergies. Um, 
if there's someone who, for instance, for certain diseases, if you have like asthma, COPD, um, where allergies would definitely make you sicker, you know, oftentimes um, people already have these in their homes to use before they go out. So, you know, to make sure that they're prepared. There is epinephrine or adrenaline. We know it's mostly as epinephrine. This is usually the one that you use for someone who has like some severe allergy. Um, this is usually not for seasonal, but who knows, it can be for like a beast. If a beast stings you, or maybe, um, you know, I know a lot of people are familiar with EpiPen. Someone has a serious allergy of some sort. So I did want to mention this. Um, so we remember, and remember the EpiPen, it's not, you don't have to be trained for this. You just remember it's one, you use the biggest muscle in the thigh and it's usually the outer thigh. You just basically the person you lay them flat, turn their face to the side and you just basically stab them with that. I know it sounds vicious, <laughs> but you just stab sure. them in their thigh with the EpiPen and it ejects and gives the um, adrenaline. And that usually helps because, and then it gives you like a 20 minute timeline to get that person to um, the ER. So it's just like a you know quick thing. But if it ever happens, just get out that EpiPen and just stab them in their thigh. Um, allergen immunotherapy. Um, when I was actually the doctor, my experience was this is that um, there was like a little room and everyone was having like this whole session about allergies. I was like, wow. Like I did not knew it was such a big deal at that time. Um, and one lady even explained to me how she was there because um, her allergies are so bad, she would have to have the immunotherapy, which desensitizes you. So, you know, the reactions you would usually have. So this is like a long-term treatment. So you go and you'll get like these injections or some people get it in tablets or sprays that they have at home. But you can go to your doctor and get these injections in specific timelines where, you know, you're prepared for your um, allergy season. And I think um, from what she was saying, after a while, you don't need as many, you don't need it as much because I guess your body starts to know how to react to allergies. Any questions? Everyone's quiet. Henrietta, any questions? Amy? I guess not. All right, so um, just so we all remember some of the medications for allergies, um, for the antihistamines, you have Benadryl, you have Allegro, Claritin, Zyrtec. I know most people will be familiar with these. So I highlighted Benadryl because this is what you call a first generation antihistamine. Um, first generation means it has a lot more symptoms. And I wanted to highlight this because um, in people over 65, usually this is a big no-no. We do not like to prescribe the, or, you know, or tell any, anyone to take Benadryl because the side effects are extremely, um, it's like way more than you'd have with the second generation ones like Allegro, Claritin, and Zyrtec. So for instance, with Benadryl, um, I think a lot of people might know Benadryl makes you drowsy. So there are people who use Benadryl as a sleep aid. So they'll take it, it makes them drowsy. I personally tried Benadryl once in my lifetime and it was horrible. I could not because my body is very sensitive. I don't really take any medications. And I literally could not function to go to work the next day. I felt my head was heavy. I felt lethargic. And this is why I didn't say, if you take it, do not drive. I was like, and I, first of all, I couldn't sleep all night. And then in the morning, then I felt tired and my head was heavy. And I was like, oh my goodness, it was such a disaster. But anyway, um, so better drill. <clears throat> Please stay away from that. Um, Allegra, Claritin, Zyrtec, you can get these over the counter. Um, the side effects are minimal. Benadryl as well, and you know, these antihistamines. 
the way they work to be effective. Remember your nose, your nose is running, your, your eyes are itching. It dries up your system. Like it literally dries you up. So for some people, if you know, like for someone with glaucoma, for instance, we may not advise for them to take this. It's gonna, you know, dry them up. It causes vasoconstriction. So the vessels constrict. So the, this is why sometimes people with um, high blood pressure will tell them not to take not to take allergy or cold medications without checking with your doctor because you know you don't want side effects that you weren't expecting. Then we have the intranasal corticosteroids, the flow nase, nasal cord, nasal neck. These you can, you know, spurt into your nose. You have to be careful with these because sometimes you have rebound effects where if you use them too much and all of a sudden they, you know, it makes, it causes like constriction as well. And then you're gonna have like a stuffy nose that's never going away, you know, stuff like that. So be careful with this as well. Um, combination ones are the ones that have both, like the cetirizine, which is Zyrtec D, Fexofenadine, Allegra D, Claritin D. And then of course, with a combination one, the side effects are more than just each one by itself. So please be careful. Any questions? Okay, how do we manage our allergies? So one thing that I always say to people, um, and it's simple, is to wash your hair. And I put that separately because um, I know for people like mixed people, African-American people, um, we don't always wash our hair every day because it doesn't dry the same way like someone with straight hair. Um, but if you can and you have the hair that can dry easily and you have a lot of allergies, washing your hair makes a big difference because when you go out to the pollen gets in your hair, what happens when you go to bed? You go to bed, you sleep on your pillow, then you come home another day of that, you sleep on your pillow, your sheets. The next thing you know, your sheets, your pillow and all that stuff, it's filled with pollen. You're putting your face in that every night. So it's, <laughs> it's not going to be good you know, have a lot of symptoms. So washing the hair is one key way of getting rid of, you know, the pollen from your hair, changing your clothes for self-care. You know, you'll change your clothes every day. Don't rewear them. Wash your linen often. Um, you may be even changing your towel. So that can also help with allergies. You can wear a hat when you go out to prevent it from going, you know, the pollen from going into your face as easy as easy as it, you know, it would if you did not have a hat. Um, it also prevents it from going into your hair. So the hat makes it, it and your eyes, of course, nose, eyes, everything. So um, makes a big difference. Now, one of the things that I always recommend is wearing a mask. And don't just wear the mask. If it's a reusable mask, please wash it. Because, um, you know, if you don't wash it, then we're having the same cycle over again, you know? Um, some places recommend allergy proof in your home. You can have, um, you know, like your curtains, buy the type of curtains that maybe, you know, it's washable, but you can wash it intermittently um, or just, you know, just before the allergy season, you wash it and things like that. Um, you can make sure you keep your, some windows closed. Sometimes they recommend not having carpet for people with a lot of allergies because you'll bring pollen into your home and it's you know harder to, to clean the carpet. So a wood floor would be better for someone like that. Um, I can't think of anything else. Any suggestions? Anyone has any, have, does anyone have anything that they do to help with allergies? Dave, what do you do in your home? Can you unmute please? We just spent some money at the other filler system for the air conditioning. Oh that, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, that seems to be working well. Yes, because yeah. they also say exactly the place too is humid. Sometimes you have a humid home, it's you know, it makes your allergies worse. So um, and the air filter and all that stuff, you know, you have to make sure you clean those. 
make sure it's one that can be cleaned out because some of your filters are harder to change than others. Um, yep, I think that's it. And then in summary, um, excuse me, <clears throat> what of taking some uh, um, fruits like orange juice for, for vitamin C to see whether it could help? Um, I think the thing is, for me, what I would say with that, the vitamin C would definitely help with not like maybe catching a cold or something. Like it would help boost your immune system. But if you have an allergy to a specific thing, you'd have to avoid that thing so you don't get that allergy. You know what I mean, Henrietta? Yes, yes, I know. Yeah, all right. But thank you for bringing that up. So I have a summary here. You can actually check the pollen count um, and the type of pollen that's going to be high on a particular day. There are apps for this. There are a lot of websites for this. So you can literally check this. You can check the news, like Kevin said. Um, I particularly look at the news for the day it's going to be. Sometimes I just know because I start to have itchy nose even from in my apartment. But um, I would still check because then I would be like, oh, today. And if I, you know, if you don't have to go, then you stay home because you don't want to have a bad day. Um, you pre-medicate. Um, when I first was told that I have allergies, the doctor did tell me, and I, of course, I was resistant. <laughs> oh, Petronella, you know, you're going to have to take antihistamine or corticosteroid just before um, I just realized I spelled this wrong, critical steroid. So, um, sorry. <laughs> so, you know, just before your allergies, like, you know, like a few weeks before, come to learn when I was in school doing my, you know, my nurse practitioner degree that it is true. They do recommend that you prepare your body by taking antihistamine or cortical steroids for a few days, like even maybe a week before, because the research shows that it actually, the symptoms are worse once they start and then you take the medication after. They're saying it's like the same, you know, the symptoms are worse. So it's better to take it before. What I do, if I know the allergy count is high, <laughs> pollen count is high, um, I would take my Claritin before I leave the house because then I know I'll be sneezing all day and people will be looking at me. When I worked in patients, it was very annoying because the patients, you cannot let out. I worked in oncology you could not let out one little sneeze <laughs> or a little cough because sometimes with allergies you have a tickling in your throat the patients would look at you like you know like what are you even doing at work because they'll think you have a cold and they don't want you know they don't want to get sick because they're they're immunocompromised so i would make sure i take my claritin because i don't want any patients saying are you sick <laughs> which is how they'll react to you if you cough or anything and then you'll say it's allergies sometimes they still don't believe you so um, you also want to plan your schedule, you know, spend less time outside on high pollen count days, um, you know, do something in the library, you know, instead of in the park or whatever. This one is very important and I'm an advocate for water as people might know by now. I talk about water a lot. Drink lots of water because your allergies are going to be worse if you're dehydrated because histamine production is increased when you're dehydrated, which makes sense. As well as water helps. I always say water helps with mucus. It helps, you know, it helps to move it along your GI tract, your respiratory tract. It helps it to come out of your body. So drinking a lot of water is very important. And that's it, the end. So, any questions? Dave, you don't have one question. You did such a nice job. It was wonderful. Thank you. That's Tamika. That was Amy. Oh, Amy. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> You're welcome. Better. All right, so if there are no questions, that's it. I didn't want to make it too long. I'm learning from my past presentation.